Hello everybody, we're here with Dustin and Cedric from Cloven Altar. So how are you guys doing today? Uh, I'm doing great. Well, I'm fine. Awesome, awesome. So how do you guys get um, in contact with each other? So uh, basically I uh, found Blazing Stone on YouTube and I said, wow, this is awesome shit and I want to send this guy a message, you know, so I did, and uh, that's how it started, basically, because he was friendly, and uh, we started talking more about music, and uh, one thing leads to another, you know? Yeah. So, did you guys, so, um, did you, like, send him your demos, or, like, how did that work out? Uh, yeah, I thought, I think I sent him the, first I sent some shit that I had recorded before, <laughs> <laughs> Clove and Alter had the girl singer and, uh, you know, me playing shitty guitar. So, uh, he heard this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, that was just for, like, uh, listening to see if it was, was getting to, and then you sent me the other tweet. Yeah. Were you, were you kind of like, did you see potential in the project, that's why you wanted to join, or did he kind of like say, can you please join my band, <laughs> or my, my project? I think I was more into helping out, actually. <laughs> yeah, I was lucky, because uh, if it was just me by myself, it would have just probably sounded pretty shitty. <laughs> you, 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 can do a, you can do a compilation album with the free approach you sent to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I sent him a garage band demo with the same same fucking drums every yeah. time and uh, <laughs> he knows by now what to expect. <laughs> That's funny. So who came up with the name Cloven Alter? Uh, it was actually my friend who played the drums originally in the band and I think he just made the name as a joke and I, uh, I didn't really know the bands Cloven Hoof or Pagan Alter so I didn't really give a shit and I just said oh that sounds pretty cool. And then I got a guy to make a logo for it, and then just, that was it, <laughs> you know. Are you guys fans of either of those bands? Hmm. Um, actually, I've never listened to them before, but uh, I, I looked up, uh, I think it's a Cloven Who. Yeah. Uh, it's very confusing with all those different names. Yeah. But they Cloven and I looked, up, looked them up, and... Um, and I accidentally came into one of the newer songs called um, I'm Your Nemesis, with like yeah. the worst <laughs> music video ever, with like <laughs> demonic face. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that and video like, sucks. Yeah. And uh, no offense to you, Dustin, but it, 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 it's really fun when uh, the, the bass player and the drummer looks like really two metal people and, and the other looks like teachers. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's the context of it. Yeah. <laughs> Nathan, you got to see this video, man. It's uh, the song is okay, I guess, but man, the video is so cheesy and so like they use these special effects for the face. <laughs> looks, oh my god! It looks like a joke, like a horror movie gone bad. <laughs> that's that's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not even that good. <laughs> no. And then the Pagan Altar band, I've I've listened to that. It's pretty cool, but uh, I don't know. To me, uh. It's very, the songs are very long and it's not very heavy. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm too young to appreciate it because it was like new wave of British heavy metal, like older, older style, I guess. Yeah. Witchfinder General kind of takes the, you know, the crown for the doomy side of that, you know? Maybe yeah. Um, I was listening to the album and you know what? I, if you guys never told me, you guys from two different countries, I was totally blind. It sounds like it was recorded in the same studio. Or, you know, okay. same session. How did you do that? Because I know um, I, you record all your albums for Rock Rollas and Blazing Stone. So is it just how, how you work? Is that how it came out so great, the production? Uh, I just go about like I uh, usually do. You know, like um, have my recording equipment and stuff in my studio room. And, uh, and I mean, I, I just know how to use my stuff. Uh, earlier on, I was like, Cheap ramps and I've upgraded stuff uh, gradually with time, and uh, I have some pretty good stuff now. Uh, 
and uh, I mean, uh, uh, without without uh, learning with my uh, crappier stuff or what I should call it, uh, I don't think I would have would have the like uh, what to say. Uh, uh, no, as, but, as a know, good sound. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you can you can get the most expensive shit you can get. You can still make an album from the shit, you know. Like, yeah, I I, I don't have that like Metallica is really uh, expensive stuff to record. Psychedelic, for example, but it really sounds shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like you're somebody who doesn't know how to do anything, like just mucked up stuff and. So it doesn't matter that they are like the richest band in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do what I can with the little I have. Yeah. He he has a good ear too. Like Sed knows what sounds good and he knows if something's in tune or not in tune and he knows like he just knows like instinctively, I think, what's gonna sound good. Because I just send him my vocals. I record my vocals in like the bathroom, you know, it's like <laughs> it's like a joke. But then he knows like he can take it and Put the right effect on there, and uh, yeah, it sounds like we were recording in the same place. Sounds oh, great. Yeah. Uh, it's not out of tune. You sing decently, but uh, I do the same with my own vocals. If if I do a good take and uh, and I think it has the right feeling and everything, I just um, pitch like one word up or down if it's a bit out uh, about the tune. But I I've, um, I never use out of tune. It's, it just sounds too artificial. It's, yeah. I want those, uh, those, those few, um, uh, I mean, um, to say, mi mi in mis imperfections. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's mis right. Imperfections, that's like getting perfect again. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, and uh, I like I like recording by myself here because, uh, you know, I can fuck up many times and just try again and no one cares. My wife is just you know, busy doing something else, <laughs> so I can just keep recording and, uh, yeah. And I think that's a really good thing too for, for our cooperation, because uh, I have um, I have recorded with others um, before that, like, has to go to a studio. I won't say many names, but I have done it a few times, and, and first of all, it's, it's, I mean, when it's about vocals and stuff, I, I don't... I, I don't know what you uh, what you use for recording, but it's, it's totally fine enough because uh, it's always possible to touch up the the like sound uh, afterwards. You, you can use a, I mean, you don't have to use like a rock band uh, microphone or something. That would sound cheap no matter yeah. what. But, uh, if you have a decent microphone and uh, just uh, record it decently, you, you just it's just fixing it up later and will sound just as good as using a better microphone. Yeah. Yeah. The one I used for the album is uh it was like USB microphone. I think it was like a two hundred dollar microphone. So it was it was okay. It was better than maybe what I use for Grim Deeds. <laughs> that I just I record whatever. Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite songs off the albums if you can pick one? You know, I know it's hard because it's something you recorded, but if you could pick like some of your favorite songs, what would you say it would be? I I wanna hear Seds first. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think hmm, I, 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 sometimes I take out the, I mean, I take out the, I take out the Club Alter uh, album often, more often to listen to them than I do with my own, like Bass of Stone and Rockerola and stuff, but I think that's partly because uh, I didn't write the song, so it's more like listening to another band that, yeah. that I could enjoy, like a listener. Yeah, I think it's yeah, I think it's like that. So, uh, yeah, I, I tend to listen to the whole uh, to the whole thing. So I, I haven't really thought about which is the absolute favorite. But I, if I have to choose one, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're all so awesome. It's so hard yeah, to pick. Yeah, it's just awesome. I, 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 um, Okay, if I say one, um, beneath the setting sun, I like the the drive in it. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> that was also an intent from the beginning. Yeah, you made that <laughs> much better because uh, when I sent him this 
original demo, it was like pretty just mid tempo song and not like very good dynamics. But he made the gallop riff for this one, and it sounds really good. And he added uh, actually uh, a couple of parts for vocals too, just some uh, kind of made the song uh, more developed. And uh, yeah, I like that song a lot too. Actually, I do that with probably every song. You yeah. Remember? Oh yeah. It's good because uh, it lets you focus on the actually important things, the verse and chorus. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And then just try and make my melodies uh, a little different each time because I think you know my my habits are basically uh, I come out sounding the same, you know, with uh, a lot yeah. of my <laughs> my melodies. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's, it's easy to it's easy to to vary it on that uh, on it when when I get the hands on it. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's good. It's a nice, uh, it's like a nice partnership, you know, because he kind of takes the best of what I have and then he makes it better. So do you guys say, would you like hit, each, you know, ideas off each other? Like, okay, here's an idea, then maybe he'll make it better kind of thing? Or is this, or you guys stick to the blueprint overall? I mean, usually it's pretty simple. Like I just send him the basic verse, chorus, uh, riff structure, and then... Uh, he lets me know, is this one uh, pretty good to keep? Or maybe, you know, is it uh, is it worth keeping? And if it is, then he just, like, creates his own version and adds extra parts and then sends it back. And I say, yeah, this is awesome. And then, uh, then I have to just work on the vocals. And lately, I, like, send him my vocals with no lyrics. So it just sounds like I'm speaking uh, Japanese or something. <laughs> yeah, but that's, uh, that's a good way. Yes, uh we just uh, focus on how how we want like the the, the feeling of the the vocals or, or to be. I I, I I do that myself too. I like, I like to start the song with the recording and then I just sing whatever I can come up with. And it, it, I mean I mean you you you're obviously obviously um, uh, you, you talk English uh, by default. Yes. But, uh, but uh, when I do it, it's like it's like it's like a you know, like uh, swinglish, yeah. <laughs> and it, it doesn't make any sense. And it, it's like mostly just uh, probably it sounds pretty much like like you do. I think. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like uh, I like the I'd like to see your process too when you're doing your own music because uh, I know you work so hard every day, basically like all day. And uh, it must be very interesting to see, like, what does Cedric do from the moment he wakes up and then, like, goes straight to the studio and just... You, you, you can uh, document that with one picture. I think that with my guitar, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, uh, uh, in reality, I actually sit there and then I go, go about to come to my internet app and, like, check email if there's somebody yeah. or something. So, but... Most of the time, I, I just sit there and record it. So that's awesome. But it, it, it it's also really fun when I mean you, you know I'm pretty fast with the uh, um, Tobin Alter recordings. You, you send it and then you wake up and you have it universal. But uh, I actually it never takes more than like an hour to to react uh, react because it's it just um, it, it's a big relief to uh, to <laughs> not have to do those like. Uh, like hundred different, different riffs in one song, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, and, and rock and bullets, everything is very. Uh, I think you you really push your skills to the limits with your own projects, you know. So like uh, last last rock and rollers, when I listened to that, I was like, oh my gosh! Like you could feel all of the uh, evolution, you know, of, of all of your songwriting, your riffs, your singing. And I mean, I don't know, Nathan, if you know this, but like he was singing on on uh, last uh, several records, like the previous Rockerolas and Brayton Hold, and now, you know, I think uh, it sounds great. You know, there's very few people who can do all of it and record it, so mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a special talent. And most, most, of the, most of the people actually just do a one, one man uh, metal band, so like, uh, like uh, you know, basement black metal. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and don't get the documentary, you know? 
Oh yeah. Did you see that one <laughs> with uh, Zaster and? Uh, yeah. 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 What, what entertaining to watch, but uh, I mean, I I've been involved in uh, uh, recording drums for a black metal band. Yeah. Uh, uh, band. It's it's a guy, and he doesn't play drums himself, so I have to record for him. Uh, and uh, and uh, and I don't I don't joke around there because um, uh, I recorded like I, I think I've recorded three times with him. Yeah. Drums three times, and that's like uh, first time I recorded four songs, then I recorded like ten songs, ten songs or something. Yeah. And uh, with those, yeah, I just like cut and paste the different parts of those and release like ten different albums with those drums. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he he obviously puts a lot of effort into the like riffs and stuff, but it feels like it's a bit limiting to use already finished uh, guitar and uh, drum parts because you can like do uh, like uh, different markings or pauses and stuff because it's always like this. Oh yeah. That, yeah. Like, that beat, you know. <laughs> well. I mean, I think Sid and I b both have a pretty similar way of thinking about how to write a song. And, like, we like to make a song uh, sort of feel very complete and feel like, hey, this song has a great riff, uh, good good vocals, good melodies. And uh, it's kind of like we both enjoy, like, classic metal, rock and roll style, you know? So, like... Plus, I think uh, the speed metal uh, is something we both really like, you know? And uh, so we know the structures. And uh, I've always liked metal that had those structures because it's just more fun for me to listen to, you know? And it doesn't have to be so, uh, I don't know, like the one-man black metal bands, those guys always seem very miserable. <laughs> so, uh, I'm like kind of a happy guy, you know? So it fits my mood a little bit. Yeah. Uh, a little bit back uh, to, Dest uh, to Destin really quick is uh, what's your favorite song off the album? Um, well, I like the the one called the Mythic Age because the chorus in that song is like so emotional. You know, it's like uh, I don't know why I thought of this song. Actually, a few of the songs are based on this uh, this Polish uh, story, The Witcher, which I I think said may know this. Uh, you know, The Witcher is now like a video game, and uh, I think they're going to make a movie from this, but it's like Poland's version of uh, Lord of the Rings, and uh, what I like about it is it talks about, like, different, uh, you know, creatures, and there's, like, elves and people, and uh, in the story, the the humans are always kind of the bad guy, you know, they're the ones fucking everything up, and that's kind of how I feel about, like, the world, so I like to try to to write these songs where it's like fantasy lyrics, but at the same time, there might be some, some truth to it about the world. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think my favorite song probably be the title track. Actually, I really like the, the, you know, the vocals and also the guitar playing the solos. Really, I really like the solo in that song a lot. Yeah. Guitar solo. Yeah. Guitar solo yeah. rules on that one. <laughs> solo just like by teaching yourself did you ever take lessons because all the techniques you have are very advanced I think because you know I like I listen to a lot of guitarists and there's a lot of American guitarists who are okay but like obviously you have a, a natural ability to hear what a good solo will sound like and and you have like all the advanced skills you know that I think 
I'm a kind of lazy person, but <laughs> I think even if I tried very hard, like it would be very hard to even come close to your level, you know? Actually, it's, um, it's actually a, a combination because, um, in my opinion, I'm a bit, uh, I'm, I'm actually a bit, um, I wouldn't say handicapped, <laughs> but I'm not that, I'm not that technical when it comes to, I mean, I can play with you flashy stuff at times, but I'm, um, I, I consider myself more of a songwriter composer, and I, I think that really, really like um, shows when I do my shows because uh, I I tend to I, I tend to focus on trying to make it more like you know when you write vocal vocal lines, it has to be something that sticks in in the head. Yes, and. Uh, and I think I do the same because uh, if if you like uh, compare it to somebody obvious like in your lung team, yes, it's like uh, it's obviously a really technical guy, but he often just use the same technique in almost every solo. It's like that that freak on scale, you know, like, mm-hmm. like Egyptian stuff and and those sweeps and stuff. But it's not often I have like. Okay, I, I don't listen much to his music and right, but uh, but he, he's obviously more like a virtuoso in first hand and then even though I think he thinks really he's a composer. <laughs> <in first hand. laughs> yeah, he thinks he's a yeah, like the guitar god. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think uh, that's that's cool. Like, because uh, I know the other guys in rock and rollers are also very good players. Like, Emil is very good guitarist. Uh, he's very fast, very clean, and like I know the videos you post is very. It's fun for me to watch those. But uh, I always, for me, like uh, my biggest respect goes to players who are also composers. Because I think composing is is a more rare skill. There's lots of guitar players and drummers and bass players who can just play anything, but composing takes like something that's you can't really define you have to just be able to create it somehow you know yeah i was actually just gonna say that that to me songwriting is more important than if you can play like Yngwie Malmsteen you know yeah i, I think uh, both have their uh, benefits yeah yeah but because uh, more te- uh, more more uh, technical abilities uh, might like lead to writing stuff that would be hard to do otherwise but it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be something worth listening to. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Plus, it also it allows me to write songs that are very simple, and I can still get away with it as long as it's catchy enough. Yeah, I mean, the, the Clavonata songs are they are almost like more simple than The World Has Begun. Yeah. Song. I mean, it's slightly down there, but it, that has nothing to do with being worse or something. I, I think I think overall the those songs are actually more brilliant in <laughs> simplicity. Actually, wow, well that's uh, <laughs> that that feels good to hear that because man I feel very like thankful that uh, Cedric does anything with me uh, because really you know him and also Danny uh, from Stormspell like they kind of uh, made my dream of having a metal band come true. I wasn't very confident about it until uh, these guys kind of stepped in and helped me out. That's yeah, really cool. Yeah, good guys, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, can you tell us a little about the new Rock and Rollers and Blazing Stone and Bright and Hold album? Yeah. Albums? Okay, uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I like, I've always thought since I heard the first Brayton Hold, I was so excited about that one because uh, I saw that with Brayton Hold, you were just trying lots of different ideas, you know? Because you can tell with uh, Rock and Rollers, like each album has its own special sound and something you were going for, like a goal. And then, of course, Blazing Stone is like uh, trying to create this classic running wild sound, but also through your own uh, voice. But with the Brighton Hold, I felt like first Brighton Hold album, it was just you just trying different things. And uh, uh, some of the songs turned out so good. Uh, and then the, the new album, too, it has like just a lot of uh, it has a lot of power. And I think 
maybe you feel more free when you're doing songs for Brighton Hall because you can kind of just do whatever you want, you know? Yeah, I think it's, um, I mean, uh, I, for some reason, I think that the Bright, uh, Brighton Hall is more like a testing ground for rock and roll. I mean, they, they are very tightly connected with this area because obviously it's, uh, it, there's no like uh, thematic difference mm-hmm. really. Or, uh, or even less musically different, They're pretty much interchangeable. Obviously, because I've written some song for one other project and then I turn it to the other and vice versa. Yeah. But um, I think uh, it, for me it feels uh, it didn't feel like uh, this is. I mean, I, I put my whole heart into it and I think uh, that I I and I really try to do the best I can with it. But in the end, I, I think that it's, um, it, it, it feels afterwards now like more like a, a testing ground because uh, mm-hmm. now, I've, now, I've, now I've tried a lot of different stuff with Brayton Hall that I have not done with Pokerola at the time. Yeah. Like, uh, for example, uh, I, especially with the, the new Brayton Hall, that's like this uh, Mirrors Alive, uh, mm-hmm. see my ballad and stuff. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, overall, just try more uh, different uh, song structures and stuff. And I, I feel what, what I what I think it's a it's a cool album. I think everything. I, I think I will I will continue that that pattern with with uh, with Pokerola and and uh, that will show on the next one that I have in the room next to me right now. I'm working on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what? and it's, uh, you know, I think one of the reasons said is is well known besides the quality of his music is he is one of the few guys that actually will not take a long time, you know, to put out a new song or create a new song. He's always right. able to, uh, yeah, he's prolific, you know, he's, he's always writing shit, and that, I think that's a connection I have with him, too, because for me, like, in the last year I wrote like 50 songs or something you know like combining everything all the punk and the metal stuff and like Cedric has put out so many albums in such a short amount of time and and I love it because I think it should you know it shows that it's possible and if you just focus and you don't just sit on your ass like you can get a lot done and you can feel very accomplished and I hope that he feels very uh proud of everything because uh it's a great achievement you know like even if the songs weren't even that great, it would still be a good achievement, but it's actually like really good. So it's like, yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. One thing I I've know. noticed uh, with um, Rock and Roll is obviously, big, you got, you're a big Running Wild fan, obviously. But I hear like Grave Digger coming through too, and all those, so like that early Blind Guardian type of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a big influence. I mean, um, Run Wild has or been an obvious influence since since the first album, I think. Uh, I mean, not not as much as uh, Blake and Stone, obviously, but uh, there's always been traces of it, and um, and uh, I, I think that has uh, seen. I never listened to Black Guardian for before, like I mean, I have heard a couple of songs here and there, but I think it was like two years, two three years ago, maybe, and. Um, and since then, it has like taken over my life completely, you know. And, yeah. uh, and uh, I mean, especially when I when I when I discover discover something that has so many great albums in a row, you know, like the all from Battalions to Fear to Night Falling Midnight, and I even like uh, I even like uh, a Night at the Opera. Night at the Opera. Yeah, Night at the Opera is good. Yeah, it's a, it's good. It's, it's very different from the from the others, but it has like. Uh, appeal if you're just open-minded and don't don't just try to uh, expect another like uh, follow the blind. Yeah. <laughs> yes. My, what's your favorite? Said my favorite is uh, somewhere far beyond. I think that was the first yeah. one that I heard. I think and it was like I just love that album. You know. I've noticed. I've noticed that uh, somewhere far beyond is a is a common uh, favorite. But um, I would say imaginations. It just. Yeah. Oh, good choice. Okay. More uh, like you know, um, what do you say? Consistent from start to finish. I I I only think really 
feel like the last song in the story end. That one is like they could have cut that and end with another whole of war. Yeah. But, but uh, with somewhere far beyond, I think they have some truly amazing songs like Journey Through the Dark and uh, mm. and the title track is absolutely amazing. Oh yeah. And, but uh, I, I think I might be in a, uh, in a weird position here where I. I'm not really into the bar song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I see the appeal of it, but um, uh, for me, there's there's much more to Lord of the Rings and uh, A Fast and Future Secret for yeah. when when it comes to to like Blind Guardian Ballad. Yeah, um, even Skull, even Skulls and Shadows from The Twist and the Myth is more appealing to me, but. Yeah. Um, a bar song it just it never got me, and especially the, the second part never got me at all. That one <laughs> super rushed. <laughs> yeah, but that's my opinion. No, that's that's I like hearing that. I like the old records too. I like Follow the Blind a lot. I mean, the speed metal stuff always is my favorite. Um, and I always liked the thing I liked about Gravedigger and Blind Guardian is the singers weren't perfect. You know, like they just sang with a lot of heart. And also, I mean, Running Wild's like that. Yeah, it's a terrible thing in reality. Yeah. He just put so much heart into it, so it doesn't matter. I mean, there's, there's a lot of moments on those uh, on those early nineties. I, I I don't uh, the the eighties great thing stuff is it's fun, but it's like from the reaper forward, it's like yeah. when it really gets going, you know. Yeah, and, I agree yeah. with that, especially um, you know the medieval saga albums. You know, I think that's like oh, the best yeah. thing they did. And yeah, those are fucking incredible, and and also a, a huge. Uh, in class, but with Grave Digger it was a weird, weird, you know, uh, relationship with those guys because uh, uh, I first started out with like finding a, um, a heavy metal breakdown LP. Oh, the old one. Yeah, uh, in a record store, and that's what. And this is fucking cool, and uh, but I, I, I didn't think it was like uh, excellent. Yes. I, I, and they have like a couple of really cool songs like the title track and uh, I, I, I think I might be one of the few who actually thinks that the um, Heart Attack, the last song, that's a really cool song because it's like, uh, it's, um, it's like, uh, it's like the closest you can get to hardcore punk with Gravedigger. Yeah. It's like, it's super simple, it's going up, going up, so that's a really cool song, but, uh, Anyway, it, it, it's, um, besides that, I never really got into Grave Digger until when they was about to release uh, The Clans Will Rise Again. Yeah. And I and I looked it up and and I was uh, actually overwhelmed and I thought it was like, this is like, how can they ever be this good? And I never like looked into their, their 90s albums seriously, but I was really into that. I think it was... At that time, it was also when they have a they had a contest where you could uh, yeah. play guitar to one of the songs. Yep. And, and I got into third place, I think. Yeah. Is that video yeah. still up? I saw the video. Yeah. I watched it. Yeah. It was kind of stupid because uh, when I was supposed to meet the guys in uh, in Fall, and it's just a neighbor town. Yeah. To, uh, close to where I live, but when I was supposed to go there, I was. Yeah, of course I was too drunk, so I I, I didn't even find the guys. And uh, and after a while, I uh, actually read the new guitarist. He was uh, he was actually on uh, searching for me, so he find me, and I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and 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 in, in and in retrospect, I think it was uh, because I just got into more than great digger uh, like with that album. I think it was I I, I I'm actually uh, I'm not. I'm not really regretting not meeting the other guys because they have a fucking Jens Becker on base. Yeah. And yes. if I met them, it was like, oh, Jens Becker, running wild. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably be like that and watch all of Jens Becker because he's also playing in, in, in Running Wild. But with time, I've, I've, I've grown to, to like Grave Digger just as much as I like Run Wild. And yeah. I got all those. But also Gabriel, those four are like the absolute pinnacle of German yes. metal all the oh, time. Yeah. And, 
And, and the cool thing is that they all were bested during the 90s, where, yep. when, where metal was considered to be dead. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's yeah. true. Yeah. I, th- I throw in Rage, too. Do you ever listen to Rage? Uh, I, I've tried them out, but uh, I, I never got really much into them. But I, I look them up uh, sometimes to, to see if I can get into them. But I don't know. There's... Uh, I think I the album you should you should look at is uh, the Missing Link '93. That album is like probably is that, uh, my favorite out of that's all. Like, uh, how does the uh, cover up work looks like? It's the one that has like a uh, it's like a drawing. It's a yellow cover and it has like yeah, a I'm skeleton I'm of the weird like alien creature or whatever. Yeah, and and I I'm pretty sure it's Andreas Marshall. That's it, and it's got yeah. the song Refuge on it. <laughs> That's also cool, because all of those bands used to, um, Andreas Marshall also on their cover. Yeah! <laughs> it's like, everybody wanted to be the best the German heavy metal band, so they also needed the, the best cover of it, so... I know. It, it, it felt like they had some kind of, uh, some kind of, uh, I don't know, not, not friendly contest, but it, it felt like they had, uh, they had to, like, overpower the other bands to show oh, yeah. them the best. And I mean, even Gravedigger, who like had their like uh, little period in the eighties where they just uh, got drunk and fucked fuck their own, you know. And then yeah. during the nineties, they they really showed their full potential. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. some of those some of those covers are so cool, like Excalibur, that Gravedigger cover with like the guys who just sits in the got his sword and he's just. It's like such a classic uh, image, you know. Yeah. I love it. You know, what I think I, what's cool about Grave Diggers is that they had the aggressive, but also have like that epic elements, like a lion heart. I really like that song because it has this really aggressive, and then it goes into this really epic part that you're not really expecting. Yeah, yeah, they, they are um, actually. That's one of the parts where, I mean, I, I obviously like uh, Black Garden and their epicness of imaginations and all that, but. But for some reason, I always thought that Gravedigger had the absolute best choir. You know, those those uh, choruses with the gigantic choruses. Those actually sound better than Black Order, who are actually known for that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's true. I think that's a bit weird, because they always put so much input into their productions, with, especially like uh, uh, Nightfall and Midnight with all those experiments. They, they put a lot of effort into it. But so somehow they, they never really got the chorus uh, choirs as good as Gravedigger, who are like super powerful and uh, and um, actually actually uh, Hansi Kirsch uh, was uh, was part of Gravedigger uh, choir at the time too. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah, I, I think it was uh, a part of all choirs on uh, on uh, Nights Nights of the Cross album. Yeah. yeah. I did not know yeah. that. Was, uh, I think it's quite uh, uh, audible in uh, yes. in Valium. Oh yeah. In the chorus, you can really hear something. Oh, I gotta listen to that again. Yeah. I know uh, Kai Hansen was on some of the old Blind Guardian, like yeah. doing background. Yeah, on uh, Lost in the Twilight World on the. Yeah. yeah Lost in the Twilight Hall. He's on there. I know that. Yeah. And. and uh, I- uh, they always uh, chose the absolute right places too, because there's a demo versions of those songs too, where where you can hear how they would, or live versions with with uh, Hansi on vocals singing those parts, and uh, and, uh, and Kai Hansen joining in on those exact moments just makes that extra little uh, yeah. push song needed to be a classic, you know? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I liked also that Gravedigger has had like one guitar, you know, and like still had really good riffs, and it still sounded very full, but it wasn't always like harmonies and stuff. You know? It's always a double track, but uh, yeah, uh, I mean, they tried two guitarists uh, later on uh, during uh, Ballad of a Hangman, but uh, oh. it wasn't their thing. Yeah, and I, I think uh, they were one of those bands that like. Uh, they are just about the, the kick as riffs and not like yeah. maiden melodies or the, the advanced song structures of my guardian. So they, they can't get away with just having one guitar. That's, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. I've been telling Dustin to go see uh, Blind Guardian Gravedigger when yeah, they come through. Yeah, Fuck, yeah, let Dustin come to see Yeah. Yeah, I on that part. Yeah. yeah. Nathan, Nathan gets, he goes to a lot of shows, man. Nathan gets out. <laughs> 
I don't get out that much because I, uh, I'm lazy and, uh, I'd rather watch it on YouTube or something. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't go out there often either, but, but that, that's mostly because I, I tend to save all my money for studio for every quick month or something. And, and, um, and, um, so like, like all, almost all the money I get in on my music because I, I don't, I don't, I obviously, obviously doesn't have a job at the moment, but I live with a girlfriend who has a job, so thankful for that I can do this one day if I just keep the household going. Yeah, so. I, think it, I think it is your job, Sid. I think this is your profession and you're just, uh, you're at the early stages of it, you know? I think yeah, you should uh, treat it my, as a profession. That's my, like, divine plan, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, my my dream isn't really to become a, like a rock star or something. I, I, but I, I really I, I really think that I I would like to work more professionally professionally as a music producer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I really, I, he already I really has uh, like, bands coming to him to record at his house, and uh, everything he does it's obvious. Like the quality is very good. And yeah. So I think him making a name for himself will be great because it'll give him a chance to release music whenever he wants and then he'll get the work uh, from other bands who will be interested because they'll want to have Cedric's name on their album, you know? It's like, oh, yeah. where did you go to record that? It's kind of like, um, oh, what is his name? Uh, Nicky Anderson, right? Is that his name? The guy from, well, X and Tomb, he has um, got a studio name. Is it Sunlight Studios? In Sweden? Yeah, what's it called? I don't remember the name, but I know he has really good production. His is different, obviously, but... How about Dan Swano? Yeah, Dan Swano is like... <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> he, he records a shitload and he's he's had he's kind of like said because he had like fucking like 10 different bands you know he had edge of sanity he uh he did all this shit and uh i don't like all of his bands all that much but it's similar you know because he uh all he does he's a manager of a music store and he has a studio and then that's it and then he makes his living and then he does whatever music he wants to do i think it's very good yeah yeah i, I want to be a uh, don't or somebody <laughs> yes <laughs> um, I like the song Black Tears actually the Edge of Sanity song is pretty good it's like he he tried a lot of progressive things you know that other metal guys wouldn't try pretty cool yeah talking a little bit about live shows I saw online that Rock and Rollers has been playing uh, played a few shows is there going to be any European tour hopefully for you know for all the European fans um hopefully for sure, but uh, as it looks now, even though I mean, I mean, when when I, uh, I sing at home in my in my studio, I can just uh, I can just like uh, go, go take uh, twenty minutes a day and put some some effort into that, and, and then I wait the next day, and and that way my voice never like breaks or. Mm -hmm. so I, I notice that when when I'm on stage, I think it's a a combination of. Two or three things. I think it's. I think it's uh, um, when uh, first of all I get really excited going on stage because yes. I, really, I really like uh, they like it's it's really fun and and uh, and it gets me going. So uh, I think I, I I think I I, oh, I put much too too much power into the vocals and that's yeah. that's one of them. I noticed I I, I actually watched the first. Rokorowski we will play Ride a Wild and Fight for the Love just to I mean it's cool, uh, fun to, to watch back to to I mean and that was just like two years ago or something but anyway um, and I noticed that the, the vocals are breaking you in the first song so I was and, and I remember that because I was like singing all those high notes I was going up there ah! yeah. before, before the show just to make sure that I still have the voice because the people before the show wanted to be talking to me and was loud yeah. environment
guys that are really good singers. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that uh, now that uh, I really want to for girls to like show how we really sound and yeah. And that's the problem also because we can't go on stage and not sound like we actually do because we have come to that. I mean, we have um, that was a Swedish curse word for fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That video, I saw that video. The, the vocals sounded good. Like I, th- I think, uh, you know, it, with with the live performing and and keeping the voice, it, I think if you, you know, if you practice a lot and you develop uh, your diaphragm muscle and everything, like it 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 can easily uh, develop. I think you know, but um, it, could, it, could, it could take care of it. But but uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, this album I'm writing right now. Those riffs and melodies like interfere with the vocals all the time. So, oh yeah. So, so I wouldn't be able. To, I mean, on on uh, on Pig Rachel, I, I made sure I'm at least two song, two or three songs were able to. Okay, I, I have to be able to play this live and sing it at the same time, even though even if it won't happen. But with this one, I I, I just thought I, the better and more advanced the uh, riffs and shit is, the better. And and it won't. It just won't work. The singing, yeah, yeah, same time, time. So, oh, and also because we rely more and more on choirs because it's obviously very imaginations and yeah, it depends uh, what's coming up, uh, what I'm working on right now. It's very, it depends a lot on choirs. So, so if we have a lead singer, I can be in the in the choir department, and and that's not a big issue because often the chorus is just other open chords or just like six. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I would like to see a rock and rollers play at this uh, festival we have. It's pretty new in California called Frost and Fire. It's run by the yeah. Night Demon guys. I think that'd be so cool if you guys could play that. You know, when yeah, you're. Uh, if we get the opportunity and, uh, and get a singer wanting to, to, to hang along, uh, I think. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing really stopping me from, from doing that if we just. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Get get your passport renewed, and uh, we'll bring you here. Bring you to California. <laughs> yeah, it's actually it's actually expiring in a uh, no time. <laughs> yeah, ten years goes by fast. <laughs> yeah, that would be great though. Yeah, it'd be fun. Uh, and uh, maybe no, a, maybe a Cloven Alter show too. That'd be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, if we if we play live now uh, in 2000, 2016, I think we'll probably focus quite a lot on the new material because uh, I think that uh, I think is that uh, where we're going to play live. Uh, my my uh, my observation is that um, the best songs are always the fastest. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! It's when true. we play the future or 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 like right away. Yeah, everybody is, is like uh, on on the on the same page. But when it, 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 we just have to play like blood bath, which is like slightly slower, it's still a bit fast song. Mm-hmm. But when we play blood bath, it, it, it just seems to drag drag out a bit. But I think all of the new songs that uh, that I'm writing are, are really fast, and there's always happening something. So so I think that uh, for a live show, I think that that could be really beneficial. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think um, I, I know. I know. I know that uh, it will. It, it has already happened with Peggy Rachel that some some of the fans of the like Warriors Against Beyond the Metal Strikes Back are like, this is like uh, too much chorus and blues. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> They're, They're impatient. I mean, I, I I respect that they that they like the old speed metal, but I mean, I, I can't just like uh, hold it against what I want to do. Yes. Um, but I, I think that because uh, we will have a lot of like background instruments that enforce the the, the guitars, like yes. in the band, there's always so they, they can be a, a flute low low in the background to enhance the melody or something. But it, it will never be like uh, you know like those folk metal bands where like chuga chuga riffs and and there's like those uh, girly girlies, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, you know, I think that's, I agree, you know, I think that's the problem with a lot of the folk metal bands is that there's no power within the riffs. It's all just uh, flutes, you know. But when I was listening to the rock and rollers, it wasn't like that. It was, it added to it, but there was still the power in the riffs and the guitars, you know. And that's what they actually made, uh, for, for me, that's made, uh, okay, I, I'm, not, I'm not the biggest fan of all the, like, narration between Song of the Night for the Media Life, but they, they really, they obviously have a, a quite prominent, prom, prominent mix yes. of the a, a extra instruments on Night for the Media Life. They, they are quite oh, yeah. uh, in the front, but, I, but they are not really needed because when they play it live, they have, like, one keyboard, uh, 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 like enhancing the, the stuff, and, and it always works perfectly oh, yeah. fine live without yeah. all those uh, fancy stuff you, you go with in the studio version. That's true. That's and, true. And I don't think that, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know, I, 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 okay, I, I think the most uh, folk metal bands uh, do a pretty simple things. It might, it, it's like those simple riffs, and they have a, like the, the melody over it, and that's it, so if they can reproduce the whole thing live also, but, yeah. but I, I, I mean, I just get more going by hearing actual guitars. Yeah, well, yeah. All, all, of, all of Cedric's stuff is guitar first, you know, like the guitar has the power, you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be more keyboard or more other instruments, it's always gonna be like heavy guitars, which, which is best for heavy metal, I think. Mm. Yeah. And it'll always be. Yeah, uh, a question for Dustin about uh, Grim Deeds. You recently kind of put that project to rest. Uh, why why did that come about? Well, I've always thought, like, I've always felt kind of nervous about that project because I write lyrics that are, like, you know, uh, kind of controversial. And uh, I'm a teacher, you know, like, my job is to uh, teach middle school. And it's very easy in the U.S. for teachers to get in trouble for things, <laughs> you know, so I, like, never wanted my name to be uh, attached to this, the uh, Grim Deeds. And I did three albums, you know, that I thought were pretty good, so I was going to just stop. But I uh, actually uh, recently started writing more songs because um, one of my friends, uh, uh, this guy, Brandon, he died uh, in an accident and uh, wrote a song for him because uh, I knew him and his brother and it really, you know, was fucked up, so I just... When I have a, a strong feeling, I have to write music. So I wrote the song and put it out because I wanted everyone to hear it. So I just put it back on Grim Deeds. And then uh, since that happened, I started writing more music. So I think I just have to keep it around because it's like part of my personality. You know, there's like, I will always love metal and try to make as much metal as I can. But it's very easy for me to write new punk songs. I can do it very fast. So I just think I need to keep doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you don't need to get me involved to arrange the songs. That's true. Yeah, because they're, so, they're so short. Only four chords. Yeah. yeah. So, um, obviously, you're talking a little about that there's going to be a new Rock and Roll album on Facebook. I think you posted quite a few times that the, you're working on it. Is there any uh, future of Cloven Altar, too? At least at the moment, well, do you think? Yeah, anyway? we've, been, we've been working on songs. Yeah. We have... Uh, we quite finished already yeah we already have like uh three finished and we have a cover song we picked we were gonna do and then i sent him a demo i think just this week or something that uh i think we'll end up using and uh yeah it's pretty nice like we work very well together and uh i like hearing all the feedback from cedric and he's he's honest you know if he likes it or doesn't like it or thinks something needs to be uh developed more so uh it's very uh comfortable uh, one of the things that I noticed with many bands, um, I mean, uh, the, the, uh, there's, there's always been like third albums during history and all that, so it's nothing new. But I, I noticed uh, with so, but but um, back in like the eighties, for example, yes. uh, it's harder for a band to actually record an album, and and uh, they have to first put an album, a demo recording and send it to somebody who can like fund their studio time or something or it ends up like bad news, you know? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> but uh, but the thing is that uh, nowadays when it's so easy to, to record for everybody, especially in Sweden when when you have like those, uh, I don't know what to, to call it, studio it's called. So oh, yeah. it's like 
But when you're in a, in a like a circle, you, you can get free studio time for rehearsing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a really cool feature in Sweden. I, I think that's one of the reasons why we have so many bands, good bands that can, uh, because we have such a good like uh, music cultural thing going on there. city it's very expensive to rent rehearsal space and then any studio guy is going to charge you more money and if you live in a small town or something then you pretty much just have to do it yourself and uh yeah i think uh the good advantage with the nowadays is you can record things at your house and it's good enough and then on the internet people can see it immediately you know and uh you know people have a short attention span so it's really nice to be able to just release music fast and keep it in people's minds, you know, instead of like in the old days, you know, wait a couple of years and everyone's expecting that because uh, you have to wait till the CD comes out. But now everything is like immediate, like right there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I never got across my little point. <laughs> oh, but uh, I, I got a bit tra- sidetracked by myself by those uh, studio parameters and stuff. But, um, that, that wasn't really the, the point, but I, I think that um, um, this, this has all, uh, probably always been a case, but I, I think a, a, an important thing when you're, uh, and this is uh, my experience, others might differ, but in my experience, the more songs you write, the more, the more, uh, the more crap you can put aside and really like, uh, you know what's what's work, what works and what doesn't. Yes. And uh, I noticed this with with some new bands that like they they spend a lot of time on on writing a song. Yes. And uh, and they put so much effort into it, but if it doesn't start uh, going up, you might as well just uh, save it and uh, have it as a like uh, example of not doing that again, or maybe have it uh, some parts of it and changing it a bit and then it might be useful but I mean uh, I don't I don't okay I, I was about to say that uh, I don't I, I don't think many people really realize how much crap songs I've written during the years yeah oh yeah I mean oh, yeah. but then but then I remember that I put up this uh, riff archive ah I have it that there was like two, two gigabytes of old recordings and the ideas and stuff and full songs and everything and that was just still not everything. I mean, I kept a lot of stuff for myself. Yes. And, and that's still not everything because uh, before that, I have written a lot of stuff before that too. So, yeah. Although, I think that's uh, that might be a, a part of why I why I seem to be like this uh, this songwriting god that never does <laughs> anything like some people say. But uh, for me, it's just uh, the way I work. I think it's. Uh, it's it's easier to get uh, to to get the good stuff out there if you if you like if you if you work hard on doing as much as you can and, and then just knowing what's what's on because what I release is just a fraction of everything I've re- uh, recorded but there's always some parts of everything that can be used in the future and yes. so, so but so but some bands they tend to, to focus too much on Yes, like okay, we have to make an album with ten songs, and then they try to write those ten songs from yeah. scratch. And not many people can do that because probably they will end up with like one or two great songs. I, I, I think that our, I don't know what your, your guys' opinion on the latest um, Iron Maiden album is, but I think it was I think it was just too much of everything and. Like, like, often just like during the verse. 
voice ring. And that's like a thing you can wait with until when the, the, the crowd gets going. But they put in that, that crowd uh, the thing going on like four times during the whole song. Yeah. I mean, they could have done it. I actually thought about cutting and pasting that song <laughs> into a different uh, arrangement and see if that can work to make it uh, sound more appealing to me. Yeah. 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 Because it has really good parts, but they could have had somebody, uh, um, some producers telling us that, no, nah, maybe this, maybe this could be arranged in a different way that would work better. But yeah. Then we have Steve Harris on the board, so we can talk about it. Yeah. 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 So, um, Dustin, what's your favorite Swedish band? Oh, that's a great right. question. That's a great <laughs> question. Okay, well, I mean, my my favorite Cedric project is probably Brighton Hold, uh, but my favorite Swedish band? Oh, okay. Or bands? I think Falconer, for me. Uh, Falconer is a band who I've listened to for a very long time, and I think all their albums are good. I think Stefan Weinerhall is like very unique composer and guitarist, and uh, the first album is just very, you know, excellent, unique power metal. And uh, I like that they, you know, the singer that they got was uh, Matthias Blad. He was like just a theater singer, you know. He had nothing to do with heavy metal, and they're from uh, I don't know how you say it. Said I think it's Mjolby or Mjolby or something like this. Yeah. Yes, yes. So they, you know, and uh, I listened to the music that that they put out before because he had a band called Mythotin and uh, In Dungeon and all these bands. But uh, yeah, Falconer is probably my favorite Swedish band. Which uh, I don't think I've ever heard of. Oh man, you got to check out their first album. It's uh, 2001. It was, it was our, the thing we had with us uh, for a while, Marcus. Yes. He is a big fan of Falconer, and he showed it, and I thought it was, yeah, that's okay. But yeah, uh, I don't think that I was very impressed by it, but then uh, we, we have been writing. I think I, I think I like the music, but I, I, I thought I, I expected it to have like a more handsy, gritty vocal, but, but then again, I'm in a, I'm in a deep Black Guardian mode right now, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, what yeah. does it sound like? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, because his his vocals sound very, you know, like a theater guy, you know, like like what you would expect for a musical. But uh, yeah, yeah, the first album's got some killer songs on it. So, My favorite. oh, any other favorites you can think of uh, from Sweden? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, there's a band. It's not like I wouldn't say it's a favorite, but I think it's kind of like underrated band. Is uh, this band called Cryonic Temple from Sweden? They play power metal, and uh, they had like a couple albums with this singer and the singer was really powerful i forget the guy's name but uh oh my god you know uh, I, I used to hang around in like uh, some some punk circles in in their hometown back in oh. a few days a, a few years ago okay and those guys fucking hate the current temple and i never heard them before <laughs> oh, that was okay <laughs> Yeah, the guy, he I still had. When we was rehearsing with a uh, band, it was like, you know, this kind of DB kit. And uh, yeah. I was coming there, and, and one of the guitars said, hey, have you heard this shit? And it was like, starting a computer. Yeah, this. Uh, we, 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 we share a rehearsal with this band, Cryon. <laughs> it's like the fiscest fucking power metal shit I've ever heard. Listen to this. <laughs> yeah. But, so I, I actually got around to her some he has some like pre productions and from some of the album but but uh, I, I don't think I minded it back then because I mean I've always liked that kind of music and, and the guy who 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 was who was that like like hateful towards them it's it's like he's the biggest made of fan ever, you know? Oh my god. <laughs> so even so, uh, that was kinda of weird too. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. Bef- well before I knew about those bands like the first Swedish bands I listened to were probably like death metal bands, you know? Like I probably listened to like uh, At The Gates and like, then I heard like In Flames and Dark Tranquility and Dissection and like Opeth and uh, you know, stuff that was like popular in the US, you know? And like, I like that stuff, but uh, yeah. I always look for traditional uh, or power metal bands. Yeah. One of the first uh, Swedish band I ever heard was actually Enforcer, their demo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then obviously, uh, Merciless, 
uh, this member, stuff like that. Uh, I bet those guys from Enforcer, man, I bet they get so much pussy. <laughs> <laughs> those guys are like such rock stars, man. They're awesome. They write really good songs, too. I really like uh, Black Trip, the new uh, it's a drummer and guitarist band. Yeah. I think that's more, um, I, I, I think I've never been much into the like, 70s. So, uh, uh, Cedric, what's your favorite American metal band? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, uh, it, it's, not, it's not common for those kind of bands to really, to, to really grab my attention. Yeah. Uh, so much because, uh, I mean, I, I like, I, I actually like a, a few of those bands too, but I, I prefer when it's like uh, a bit faster because I have a short attention <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speed is good. Cedric, did you yeah. hear the, uh, the Unleash the... Whatever the new the newest riot the one they came out with like last year. I heard the sound from it, but I haven't really listened to it. But it sounds cool, and I think I think the the vocal replacement is is the best they can get because it's it's, it's basically a dead ring for for the more. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, that, that guy's a good singer. The songs are good too. Actually, the bass player wrote a lot of the songs from Thundersteel, and it's the guy. You know, he's still in the band, so. Uh, even though Mark Real passed away, like it still sounds pretty good. It sounds like classic, you know, good shit. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it has more of a. Uh, it does have a more seventies rock feeling to some of the riffs. Yeah. I, I do think it has. Uh, for some reason, that was that was actually appealing to me for once. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, I have to look it up again because it, it, it feels like it feels like. I mean, it, it's not often when you change the singer and and it really like fits that much because uh, that's just get yeah. rock and roll. Everybody sounds different, you know. Yes. Me, uh, Joseph, and Jonas. Okay, me and Joseph may have some similarities, but you, it's not like uh, Paul, Bruce, and Blaze. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no, nothing in common at all, you know. But they all have yes. like uh, their their. Uh, Appeals too. I, I I like place here and everything. So, mm -hmm. so I, I don't have anything against that. But when a band actually finds somebody who, who can emulate the original, the original, the 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 previous singer, so that it continues without feeling like a completely different band, because the singer is always the main. Oh yeah. The main song of the band. It doesn't matter if it's Inge Vanti or his guitars. I mean, if, okay. In that case, it's actually. <laughs> Okay, but in like ninety nine percent of every other band, the singer is the the, the main thing. And yeah, actually, I I think except really Nagle too with uh, that. Uh, that good. Yeah. Yeah, he, he is. Um, I I I, said, I, I respect the uh, Urdo for being like the the accept the legend and everything. Yes. Yes. But. Personally, I think Tornillo sounds better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm shocked I hear that because a lot of people don't like Tornillo. I really like him a lot, actually. Yeah. 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 He's similar enough to not be like, um, like the 
play fairly often, except, you know, it doesn't change that much, but it, it, it's actually more diverse than everything. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I keep watching that the music video for... Uh, What's the song? Two Tonic Terror? Yeah, that song is so cool. Yeah. And then I'm um, actually out of questions, but I'd like to ask, uh, where can people pick up the new Cloven Altar album and the EP? <laughs> well, if I'm uh, not lazy, I can just mail it to people from my house because I still have a bunch of shit under my bed. And, uh, you know, I have that. But um, Storm Spell has like a CD baby website, I think. And... Uh, Danny is selling uh, the CDs from the website, and uh, I prefer that you do that because <laughs> that'll make him, uh, you know, earn back some of the money he invested, and then I can. I usually just give away most of my CDs anyway. Yeah. And uh, where can people pick up the new Rock and Roll with Brian Hole and Blazing Stone? You can do for, from for me uh, if you write on like Facebook page or or uh, or maybe that's. Rockerolas at rockerolasmetal at hotmail.com, mm-hmm. uh, or or from Tonefil when opening them, so I don't have to to uh, to be distracted from writing the new album. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And when you, when you get a package from Sed, it's always going to be wrapped in some like random paper. And then if if you get some package from me, I use grocery bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think I, I think we're on the same page, Alex. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to spend my money on some packing supplies. That shit's expensive. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually on the search for um, Return to Port Royal on vinyl at the moment. Oh, yeah, that's cool. It's on vinyl. Yeah. Uh, you can probably find it on eBay or something. I don't know. Yeah. Otherwise, yes. I don't have anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys for your time. You know, thank you for, you know, taking your time to do this. It's really awesome. Yeah, well, you know, this is the first time I've ever talked to Sed, like, ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, me too, to, to Dustin, of course. <laughs> yeah. That's a cool interview, and uh, I'm sure everyone will enjoy listening to the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it'll be really cool. Definitely. Right on. All right, well, thanks, Nathan. Uh, Metal Warfare rules. Thanks, that's, your, that's your blog, right? Uh, yeah, my website, yeah. Excellent. Awesome, thank you. Um, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, thanks. I, I guess it will be up soon. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. I'll talk talk to you later. Talk to you later, man. Have a good one. Have a good night, okay. guys. Or actually morning, I think, for you, and good night to Dustin. <laughs> yeah, I got to go to bed. Awesome, man. Have a good one, guys. Bye. All right. Later. Later.